From Daily Trust News Center, this is News Hour. And on the News Hour tonight, Nasara State's governor raises alarm over influx of terrorists to his state. Gunmen kill traditional ruler and son in Taraba. Continuous voter registration exercise officially closes, many eligible voters not captured. And away from Nigeria, hundreds of protesters camp at Iraq parliament for a second day. Hello and welcome to the News Hour. I am Martia Umar. Now the news in detail. A few days after ordering the closure of schools, Nasser State Governor Abdullah Saleh has raised alarm of a suspicious movement by suspected bandits fleeing from Niger, Zampara, Kebi, and Kaduna states to the state. The governor said the large movements of fleeing bandits identified in Rugan Juli and Rugan Madaki in Karu. Wamba and Toto local government areas necessitated the expanded security meeting held in Government House Lafia. Governor Sule explained that the expanding emergency security meeting was to take proactive measures considering the security situation across the country, particularly within the federal capital territory FCT, where over 800 inmates escaped from the Kuji Correctional Facility recently. He, however, confirmed that security reports indicate that following the influx of this suspected bandit, there have been noticeable increase in cases of kidnapping within the last two months. The unfortunate uh, Kujie prisoners outbreak, where it was estimated that about 800 inmates escaped uh, recently, and we have also had the opportunity to arrest some within the, the state as a result of uh, uh, our proximity to the federal capital. But in addition to that, we have continued to see some movement of uh, some of these bandits who are, are usually kicked out of Zamfara, Kasena, Niger, uh, Kebi, and Kaduna state. We have particularly noticed some large presence of some of these at Rugan Juli and Rugan Madaki and Kauru local government especially. Uh, we have also seen some movement that we are going to discuss in more details, you know, around Womba and around Tutu, uh, local government uh, areas. Uh, as a result, we have seen a a few number of uh, increase in the kidnapping between the last uh, two months. And uh, all this combined with our effort made it extremely necessary for us to have this meeting so that we can renew some of our strategies to have to tackle this. Kogi State's Governor Yahya Bello has suspended Dohi of Ogai and the chairman of Jokuta Traditional Area Council, Musa Isa Achuja, over a security breach that led to the killing of three police officers and seven vigilantes at the weekend. The governor has also directed the state commissioner for local government and chief tenancy affairs to query the chairman of Jokuta local government area, Mustafa Akaba, over the breach. A statement signed by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Mohamed Onogu, said Governor Bello strongly warned all the traditional rulers across the state who may have connection in one way or the other with criminal elements in their domains to desist forthwith. And Governor Bello added that the same faith will befall anybody who romances with criminal elements no matter how highly placed they are in the society. And a third-class traditional ruler in Taraba State, Ibrahim Yamusa and his son has been killed by gunmen in the early hours of Sunday. The traditional leader was gunned down on his way to his palace at Yukoben community in Takum local government shortly after state security meeting. Confirming the incident, the lawmaker representing Takum 2 in the state assembly, Mark Husseini, urges security agents to fish out the killers. We lost a very respected traditional ruler, the Udeng Yukubeng, 
uh, Mr. Uh, Ibrahim Yamusa Achilok, uh, who was killed uh, by uh, by some government while returning to Yukube in his domain from a security meeting. Uh, it is rather very unfortunate. This is also uh, a condemnable act. And uh, I want to urge uh, the government to make sure that those who perpetrated this act are brought to book. I called home and they told me that it is true. And this is a barbaric act. I appeal to the security agencies to dig into the root of this problem and unravel those behind this, 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 this brutal act. And now to political matters, the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, has tasked a national leadership of 18 political parties in the country to organize training for the state chapters ahead of the 2023 general elections with a view to equipping them with provisions of the Electoral Act of 2022. INEC National Commissioner in Charge of Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, gave the charge in an exclusive interview with Trust TV's Shafiu Suleiman on the need to enhance the need to consolidate the success recorded in the nation's electoral process. The report. Actions or inactions of some political parties in the country may be in conflict with certain provisions in the new Electoral Act 2022, with attendant consequences on electoral fortunes. Okoye says to avoid being caught unawares, political parties must equip themselves with the new provisions, which are fundamental departure from the previous provisions. It is very, very important because there are clear and fundamental differences between the Electoral Act 2010 as amended and the uh, Electoral Act 2022. While reiterating the need for stakeholders in the electoral process to adhere strictly to the provisions of the new Act to enhance the credibility of election outcomes, the INEC National Commissioner says as such will also build the confidence of the electorates as the nation heads towards a general election. It is important as we move towards the general election for political parties to conform to the dictates and intentment of the law. That is the only way we can grow our democracy. INEC had cause to disagree with the political party recently over the conduct of primaries, nomination of candidates for election, these and other challenges, such as vote buying and selling, amongst others, constitute even bigger challenge in conducting credible and transparent elections in 2023. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. A River State's governor, Yesen Wike, has met with fellow People's Democratic Party governors and other stakeholders of the party who coordinates Hayes presidential campaign aspiration in Abuja on Sunday. The meeting is held at the River State Governor's Lodge at Sokoro, Abuja. PDP has been battling with internal crisis after its presidential primary in Abuja, which produced Atiku Abubakar as candidate. A member of the PDP Board of Trustees and North Central Coordinator of Wiki presidential campaign, Professor Jerry Gana, speaks briefly after the closed-door meeting, which lasted over an hour. Ghana said it is the first meeting with all candidates in the state after the primaries. Those at the meeting include Governor Shea Mackindy of Oyo State, Governor Okeze Ikbeazu of Abia State, Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State, and Governor of Enugu State, Ifai Uwai. Others are former Governor of Cross River State, Donald Duke, former Governor of St. Benue State, Gabriel Suswan, former Ondo State Governor Ulusha Gumimiko, a former Bios State Governor Seria Kidexin, Ibrahim Idris of Kogi State, and former Plateau State Governor Jonah Jang. And no fewer than 2,750,000 tablets of Chamado, 225MG weighing worth 1,375,000,000 Naira have been intercepted at the Apapa port in Lagos by operators of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. The consignment packed in 55 cartons of Chapadol and Caris Prodol types of Tramadol 
was seized during examination of a container in Lagos. Let's take a look at the report. A statement from the Director, Media and Advocacy of the Agency, Femi Babafemi, says the seizure comes on the heel of similar efforts by anti-narcotic officers at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Iketa, that thwarted bids by drug traffickers to export various psychoactive substances to London, UK and Dubai through the Lagos Airport in the past week. At least five suspects have so far been arrested in connection to the attempt. On Monday, 25th July, a Dubai UAE bound passenger, Ms. Ebodegai Gloria, was intercepted during the outward clearance of travelers on Rwanda Air via Kigali to Dubai. Discovered in her luggage were sachets of Tramadol 225 mg concealed inside Gary. The following day, Tuesday, 26th July, a total of 50 blocks of cannabis sativa with a total weight of 27.1 kg, concealed inside a large quantity of crayfish going to London as part of consolidated cargo, was seized at the Sacco export share. Same day, a Dubai-bound female passenger, Emma Bradu Precious Rachel, was arrested with 1.8 kg cannabis sativa packed inside bitter leaf in luggage while attempting to board London air flight to UAE via Kigali. In Kebi, no less than 4,010 ampullas of pentazosine injection were seized on Friday 29 July when a commercial vehicle which was intercepted along Yawuri Kebi Road and two suspects Mukhtar Yunusa 26 and Lukman Aliyu 30 was arrested. Similarly, a raid operation in Okolo area of Ilorin on Tuesday 26 July led to the arrest of Onao Lakbo, Zakariao, 50 and 79 kg cannabis sativa. Also in Abuja, no fewer than 90 blocks of cannabis and 700 grams of methamphetamine were intercepted at the Jabi Motor Park, where at least a suspect has been arrested in connection with the drug exhibits. And in Kano, 51 suspects were arrested in a raid at Sky Restaurant in Nassau area of the state on Friday, 29 July. The suspects were caught with various quantities of cannabis and codeine. In his reaction to the arrest and seizures, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of NDLEA, Brigadier General Muhammad Buba Marwa, retired, commanded the officers and men of Apapa Seaport, Adamawa, Kebi, Kwara, Kano and FCT commands for their vigilance and commitment. He urged them and their colleagues across the country not to rest on their oars but remain resolute in the pursuit of agency's goal of reading Nigeria of illicit substances. And the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons in Kasuna State is seeking the cooperation of all stakeholders to fight the transport of manners. The Kasuna State NAPTIV coordinator, Ali Musa, made the call at a press briefing marking the International Day Against Trafficking in Persons. Trust TV's Abdullahi Yamadi completes the story. Stakeholders agree that the war against human trafficking is a collective responsibility, hence the need for all and sundry to join hands to combat the menace. The NAPTIP boss in Katana is worried about the alignment rate at which children are trafficked. I wish all, all our stakeholders here to join the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, to fight and stop this menace called human trafficking in Katana and Nigeria at large. We call it as a new, new slavery. We call the people that are the trafficking are the one that is competing from what they are trafficking with you. Job seekers are being advised to be cautious so that they do not fall into traps set by elements who promise them lucrative jobs in Europe and other Arab countries. The victims end up working as slaves and sex workers if they are lucky to arrive their destinations alive. I reach out to potential clients, communicate among perpetrators and hide criminal proceeds. 
and all that with greater speed, cost effectiveness and amenability. The briefing dwelt extensively on the significant role the media plays in ensuring the successful fight against human trafficking. It also reveals that the greater percentage of human trafficking is done through casino corridors, which is why this synergy is needed to curb the menace. Uh, we've been working together on issues of trafficking and puzzles, and uh, it has been a good work together and we are glad, I'm glad to be here, knowing the number of the priests that are here to help us sensitize the public. Stakeholders are linking growing insecurity and the menace of drug abuse to human trafficking. But they believe better collaboration could curb human trafficking, leading to the reduction of these social vices. Abdullahi Ismayamadi. Post Television News, Kazana. Now to Nasara State, where the command of the Nigerian police have arrested six females over alleged cybercrime in the state. This was contained in a statement by the public relations officer of the command, Rahman Nansa, and made available to newsmen in Lafia. The command said preliminary investigation revealed that the suspects criminally conspired among themselves and utilized a popular gay dating app where they arranged dates with unsuspecting members of the public from different parts of the country, lure them to their hideout, hold them hostage, and dispossess them of their belonging while threatening them with dangerous weapons. The commander further said their victims are assaulted and forced to review their ATM pin. Their bank account is then wiped out before they are let go. You're watching a news hour on Trust Television coming up shortly. We'll take a look at how the rains caused discomfort in some communities. This and other stories after the break. Do stay with us. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency, NOAA. Documenting the Nigerian story.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the News Hour on Trust Television. But a reminder of our top stories again. We told you that Nazareth State's government raises alarm over terrorist influx to its state. And government killed traditional ruler and son in Tarapa. And moving on to more stories, the governor of Badnur State, Omar Solum, has approved Monday, 1st of August 2022, as a public holiday to mark the new Islamic year. This was contained in a statement signed by the head of service, Simon Malgui, and made available to journalists on Sunday. Accordingly, Malgui said all government ministries, departments and agencies, as well as all pr private establishments, including financial institutions, are to observe the public holiday. While wishing Muslim Ummah a happy new Islamic year, the statement urged all to continue to pray for permanent peace to be restored to the state and the nation at large. And Governor of Bernou State, Umar Sulum, has also approved the 1st of August as the new Islamic year. And this was contained in a statement signed by the head of service, Simon Balgui, and made available to journalists on Sunday. Accordingly, Balgui said all government ministries, departments and agencies, as well as all private establishments, including financial institutions, are to observe the public holiday. While wishing Muslim Ummah a happy new Islamic year, the statement urged all to continue to pray for permanent peace to be restored to the state and the nation at large. The Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, says it has registered 202,838 voters in Wombe State. The exercise is officially closed on Sunday. On the final day of the exercise, Trust TV observed that residents were still waiting to be registered at the headquarters of the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, in Wombe. Ibrahim Ismail reports. These people are waiting to be registered at the headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC in Gombe State before the end of business hours on Sunday. Some are opportune to be registered, while many others who have met several attempts are still waiting to be registered to be able to vote in the forthcoming 2023 elections. No, I am registered now. I, am, I didn't face any challenges. Um, it's not because I don't want to register. Um, a lot of things have been taking my time and I came for, it's because of line. I came three times. There was a lot of line and many people are here. So I have to postpone till this time. Hi, I don't know because of the plenty of people I'm seeing now from here now. I don't know whether I can be able to register today. Initially there was a lot of lines. People were queuing and the rest are, and some of us have to understand that you have to be patient to even assess a form first. The commission said it has done enough to encourage people to register to the extent that it increased closing hours. Uh, actually, there's challenges. We have had so many challenges when we started initially. Uh, challenges like uh, uh, when we started with the online registration. Some areas there was no network. So we have to continue for some time before the commission now deployed some machines called offline machines. So we started going into the interior where there is no network in order to be able to capture uh, most of the registered voters. So the offline was going on and at the same time the physical in-person registration was also going on. And up to the time when we closed the the online registration will continue with the in-person registration. And also challenges of, uh, uh, you know, power. So we have to use uh, some, uh, you know, uh, batteries to power those IVET in order for them to be able to work within the uh, interior. Over 60,000 permanent voters' cards are yet to be collected in Gwambi. But Anik vowed to do more on public enlightenment to change the narrative. From Gwambi, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. And still on the continuous voter registration, eligible registrants in Zamfara State on Sunday besieged the various centres 
for continuous voter registration in Gusel Metropolis to beat the 31st of July 2022 deadline for the exercise. Those who were yet to be captured won the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, to further extend the exercise by, by one week to enable them to participate in order to enable them vote in the 2023 general elections. The report. The Independent National Electoral Commission had initially fixed June 30 as closing date for the exercise, but had to extend it by one month due to public outcry. Despite the extension, many of the prospective registrants are still yet to get registered. At some registration centers in Nasarawa, many complained of pending hours are still not being able to register. The alleged bias by the staff carrying out the exercise as they appealed for extension. I will leave my house as early as 4 a.m. to line up to get registered. Numbers will be given to us by our next staff and all of a sudden the number will be dumped and they will tell us a couple of people have been here for quite some days. I have tried my best, but it's like my best is not good enough. Yesterday it was around 3 o'clock a.m. and um, before we could get form to fill in, it was around 4 o'clock p.m. of which the form had to be used today. And up to now, this is past three. We are still here waiting to do the registration of which um, when you observe some of us that have been here since yesterday, some people will come and meet us here and then they will let them in, of which this is the practice of injustice. While others lament their inability to get registered, these one are happy to have been captured in the registration processes. I start coming here on Monday. It's today that I get registered myself today. I really suffer. It's not easy. I came here around 6 o'clock and I'm done with it around 3 o'clock. So the thing, the thing are getting hard. That's not how it's supposed to be. Abakar Mohammed is the public relations officer of INEC in the state, where he trusts television via phone that the registration has been on for long, but many refuse to come until the last minute rush. And meanwhile, the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, says it has no plan to further extend the continuous voter registration despite calls for by many Nigerians. And this follows appeal from some Nigerians who are yet to register. The INEC National Commission is supervising Imo, Enugu and Eboyi State, Kenneth Ikwagu, who is the Imo state, who was in Imo state rather, to monitor the exercise. And some centers said that the exercise which started in June last year ought to have ended on June 30, but was extended to July 31. And as such, there will be no further extension. The Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, says it has no plan for further extension of the ongoing voters' registration, despite calls for extension by many Nigerians. The INEC Nigerian Commissioner Supervising Imo, Enugu and Ebony State, Kenneth Ikeagu, who was in Imo State to monitor the exercise in some centres while briefing journalists at the Commission's headquarters in Oweri, said the exercise, which started in June last year, ought to have ended on the 30th of June, but was extended to July 31st, and as such, there will be no further extension. Um, as of today, the Commission is not planning an extension. Recall that this exercise started last year, June last year. It's over one year. We were supposed to have ended on the 30th of June. We extended to uh, 31st of July. And there are other processes that have to take place after the administration, after the field work. It's not ending with the field work. We rather think all the IT people will call the back end activities that we have to carry out to ensure that they have their PVCs. It's one thing to get registered, it's another thing to have your PVCs. Some of the persons who are yet to get registered after the long day waiting express some level of discomfort over the matter. The said the exercise at some point was occasioned by sharp practices by some of the INEC staff who chose to register those who offered them money. Since morning, we've been moving from here to there. Uh, they don't have uh, enough uh, capturing machines to be able to make the transfer. And sometimes they say there's no network. Uh, we don't know why the, uh, the arrangements are not done to get these things uh, 
ready so that uh, people will not waste so much time here. So younger people will be better. They put people in place that can check meeting the light and people by the side so that people don't double cross others. Then if they can try to extend the date for us, I think that would be nice. A few. Even some are standing under the rain, some are pushing each other, some are fighting and some are quarreling. So I, I, I think they should bring more system and employ more workers. They should give us more two weeks, to extend it to, to uh, August, maybe 13th or 15th, so that other people that have not done their own will be able to beat up. For Okagu, the exercise was satisfactory with the turnout of registrants, the functionality of the machines, as well as the entire registration process. As we experience the rainy season, people in Bauchi communities are desilting their drainages to forestall flooding that could arise from the torrential rainfall in recent days. Impressed by this proactive action, the Bauchi State Environmental Protection Agency has pledged to join hands with various communities to carry out sanitation exercises. Shosh TV's Adam Imam completes the report. As heavy downpour continue in different parts of Nigeria, Bauchi State has its own share of torrential rainfalls that make people uncomfortable, especially the motorists. Some Bauchi residents told Trust TV how they cope with heavy downpour witness on Friday within the metropolis. I passed through C and C market site within the town. The water completely covered the major streets and culverts. A lot of people find it very difficult to get access. I lost a lot because of heavy downpour and the flooding. Even young age girl died as a result of this flooding last Thursday. I'm totally confused now with my work. Meanwhile, people of Yakubu and Ka community agreed to hold other activities to desilt their drainages to run away possible flooding within the locality. Similarly, the State Environmental Protection Agency continued to enlighten and mobilize publics on the need for constant cleaning of their environment, especially during the monthly sanitation exercise. The agency also barricaded major entrance into the state to engage more people for the exercise. So the residents were using cleaning their environment despite that it is raining. And uh, uh, the entrance into the main city has been barricaded fully and we don't have so much women unlike before. So actually I can rate it around 90% success, the compliance. It could be recalled that the two local government areas of Darazu and Kirifi were the worst hit by the recent flooding in the state. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. And now to for a state where Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, the CIMA has lamented the collapse of industries which stunted economic and commercial activities in this state. The president of the Chamber in Zamfara State, Hamza Balawus, decried the several industries which are at a state of commenters while speaking with journalists in Gosal, the state's capital, on plans to revive commercial activities in the state. The Zasima president, Amza Bulawus, said the state government, under the leadership of Governor Mohamed Bello, is sponsoring nine persons to Turkey and United Arab Emirates to study the proper way of doing business in order to replicate some of the state to enhance commercial activities. He told journalists that arrangements for the nine to embark on the study tour to the two countries have so far been concluded as they already secured visa to travel to the two countries. Bulaos also said arrangements is in top gear to distribute 5 billion naira soft loan to its members and traders to boost commercial activities across the 14 local government areas of the state. The CIMA is planning to give soft loan to traders to boost their businesses in the 14 local government areas of Zamfara state. We succeeded in uniting traders in Zephyr, and thank God for that. The CIMA has successfully completed establishing its structures in all the 14 local government areas. Zephyr State Governor Bello Mohammed has made tremendous effort to sponsor nine persons to go to Turkey and Dubai in August 2022 
to study how businesses are carried out there, to come to replicate some in Zamfara to boost commercial activities. The CIMA president called on residents and civil servants in the state to engage in one business or the other to avoid depending on one source of income. There are numerous benefits of doing business. It plans to distribute 5 billion naira as sub loans to traders in the first state to boost their businesses and commercial activities in the state. The 5 billion naira is a bank loan, but the Zamfara state government will stand as guarantor for the loan which will be distributed to traders. He asked the prospective beneficiaries to note that the money is in bank loan, therefore, they should ensure the money is used for the purpose it's meant for. Bulaos also pledged commitment towards improving the standard of commercial activities in the state with a view to reducing the burden of unemployment and redundancy among the teeming unemployed. In its attempt to end poverty in all its forms in the country, the federal government has maintained steady investment in health, education and other social services. To this end, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, Adejoke Orelokwe Adefulire, says 23 out of the states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory FCT have received 24.45 billion naira from the conditional grant schemes since 2015. Kendia Modi takes a look at the implementation of the SDGs in Nigeria in the midst of a crippling downturn. Of economy. Nigeria was one of 193 countries that adopted the Social Development Goals or Project 2030 in response to a global call to put an end to poverty, secure the planet, and ensure that everyone enjoys peace and prosperity by 2030. Unfortunately, with the way insecurity has spiraled, while cost of living has risen, things do not look so bright for the country. But the SDG office is not deterred by the numbers and has dispersed funds worth billions of naira to 23 participants in states and the FCT since 2017. The grants were targeted at education, health, water and sanitation projects. Institutional framework has been established at national and sub-national level to support the effective implementation of the SDGs. Thus, Nigeria is leading in the institutionalization of the SDGs. The SDG can only be achieved by standalone programs and programs and projects. They must be carefully integrated into national and sub-national policies and development plans. Currently, we have integrated the SDG into Nigeria National Development Plan 2021 to 2024 and work is ongoing on 2025 to 2030. Nigeria was ranked 160 on the 2020 World's SDG Index after its second voluntary national review in 2020. On SDG 3, which focuses on health targets, the country faces challenges such as high rates of maternal mortality. The Safe Bad Initiative was designed to support 15 strategic selected tertiary institutions across the six geopolitical zone with the set of health equipment and technical capacity support to improve neonatal and maternal health in Nigeria. And it's helping us to achieve SDG 3 on quality health and well-being for all. There are some successes. For instance, Nigeria's current access to basic drinking water now stands at 64%. The implementation of the SDGs, a set of 17 interconnected global goals, kicked off in January 2017. But the downturn of the economy means achieving the targets may not be an easy task in Nigeria. Kehindia Modu. Trust TV News, Abuja. The federal government has restated its commitment to develop and sustain partnerships that will promote dignif dignified aging and all the issues related to older persons in the country. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, stated this at an event to mark the first anniversary of the National Senior Citizen Center. In Abuja, the report. The minister, who lamented the long neglect of older people in the country due to negative stereotypes, said it was time for urgent steps to be taken to address such anomalies and give senior citizens their pride of place in the country. One of the 
objectives of the national policy on aging in Nigeria is to cause a fundamental positive change in perception, attitude, and paradigm about aging, all aging, and an inclusive society. We look forward to achieving this before the second anniversary of the establishment of the center. This we are all committed to achieving also that we will all one day be in that category of senior citizens. It is extremely important that we all put hands together to support this initiative. Elia. The Director General, National Senior Citizen Center, Dr. M. M. Umukaru, who commended President Mahmoud Buhari and the Humanitarian Affairs Minister for the legal backing given to the center, assured that the NSCC is poised to deliver on its mandate to ensure that senior citizens enjoy the benefits of aging. The commemorative event, which had the theme, Cascading Innovative Strategy, Programs, Partnerships, and Stakeholders' Engagement, featured the formal inauguration of the NSCC Consultative Committee, by the Minister, Sadia Umar Farouk. I would like to, on behalf of His Excellency President Mohamed Buhari, who has made it possible for this centre to be uh, in place, I formally inaugurate the Stakeholders Consultative Forum on Aging. We are here by inaugurating. Meanwhile, the minister had earlier commissioned the new office of the National Senior Citizen Center, NSCC, located at number 7, Maudo Street in Wuse. You're still watching News Hour on Trust Television. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You're still watching the news hour on Trust TV. And moving to other stories, uh, on the international scene this time, a former Philippine president, Fidel Ramos, who oversaw a rare period of steady growth and peace that won him the reputation as one of the country's most effective leaders ever, has died at age 94, officials said on Sunday. Known as Steady Eddie for his unflappable demeanor during the country's regular moments of upheaval, he was frequently pictured chewing unit cigars as he guided the Philippines with a sure hand from 1992 to 1998. A career military man who never previously held elected office, his professorial conduct had, was unlike the bombastic image of many Filipino politicians. He was also the first Protestant to win the top office in the overwhelmingly Catholic nation, despite op opposition from some in the church. He later made an aggressive push for the family planning to rein in rapid population growth. But like all the top officials of his generation, Ramos played a role in the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos, which saw thousands killed and thousands more arbitrarily imprisoned. And supporters of powerful Iraqi leader Muqtada al Sadri has erected tents and are preparing for a long sitting in Iraq's parliament, deepening a, deepening a one month long political standoff. On Saturday, protesters or supporters rather of the fire band, al Sadri forced their way into the legislative chamber for the second time in days after October elections failed to lead to the formation of a government. Nearly 10 months after October elections, Iraq is still without a new government, despite intensive negotiations between factions. And Morocco's King Mohammed VI has called for restoration of diplomatic ties with neighboring Algeria, which broke off diplomatic relations with Rabat last year. During the traditional speech marking the 22nd anniversary of the king's accession to the throne on Saturday, Mohammed said he aspires to establish with Algerian President Abdelmajid Tabon normal relations between the two brotherly people. He urged Moroccans to, pres to preserve the spirit of fraternity, solidarity and good neighborliness towards Algerian brothers and described the two countries as being more than neighbors. Morocco and Algeria have long been of at odds over the disputed territory of Western Sahara, where the Algiers backed a palisario front is seeking independence from Rabat's rule. And an unknown number of people have been killed and several others were injured after United Nations peacekeepers opened fire at border post in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The UN said after a verbal exchange, the peacekeepers appeared to open fire before the opening gate, uh, driving on and continues to shoot while people scattered or hide. The special representative of the Secretary General of the UN in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Bento Keita, has said an investigation has begun and the suspected perpetrators arrested. And we'll now go on a short break to return shortly. Stay with us. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum, and passions begin to rise. Remember, the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency.
Welcome back to the news hour. And now we take on sports news where Animeg Van Vloten produced another sensational ride to clinch the inaugural Tour de France fans title with a convincing final stage victory. The Dutch rider 39 had to change their, her bike three times because of mechanical issues on the eighth and final stage. But none of her rivals could leave with her late attack on the hugely steep La Supa Planche de Bellas Phillies finish. And Van Vlotaine finished 3 minutes 44 seconds ahead of compatriot Demi Valerine in general classification. Variations of women tour have been held in the past, but this year's new eight stage race is the first time since 1989 the event has officially been held and hosted by the men's tour de France organizers. And Cristiano Ronaldo was unable to mark his return to action with a goal as Manchester United ended their pre-season campaign with a one-word draw at Rio Valenciano at Old Trafford. And Ronaldo's United future has been the subject of intense debate this summer as the 37-year-old is keen to move away from the club to pursue his desire to compete in the Champions League. And he was allowed to miss United's pre-season tour of Thailand and Australia for personal reasons. Ronaldo made a point of applauding fans on both sides of the stadium as he led the outfield players out for their warming up before kickoff with the supporters reciprocating to show there is no lingering ill feeling despite the summer speculation. And finally, Nigeria on Saturday won its first medal at the ongoing Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, a United Kingdom. Adijat Adenike had recorded a total of 203 kg in the women's 55 kg weightlifting event to win Nigeria's first gold medal in the Games. And before winning the medal, she had two records in 10 minutes, lifting 90 kg and 92 kg in the snatch category of women's 55 kg weightlifting event. The Nigerian athlete was, was sang, the Nigerian anthem rather was sung while the country's flag was displayed shortly after the gold medalist was decorated. Indians Biryani uh, came second while England's Fair Moreau came third. And with that, we have come to the end of the news hour. For more updates, you can follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Mertia Umar. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned. Ask the 20